So the MMI is the biggest part of your application because it's the final stage where you have to physically turn up to a university or anywhere and showcase yourself. Now you've done like loads and loads of videos on the MMI already and I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the final one. But don't worry because I know a lot of you said a lot of stations that you wanted to see but I've compressed a lot of the final stations, so a lot of the sort of extra stations, into one video so you can go and zip through this according to the timestamps down below to see which one you want to see and we can, you know, hopefully help you revise for that. So we're going to be talking about a couple of stations. We're going to be talking about number one, resilience. We're going to be talking about number two, data interpretation. And number three, scientific advancement slash books that you've read. So if that is a station that you want to see or if you're just interested in some of the extra stations that they could ask you about then stick to the end of the video so basically i've tried to create a different style of video i'm going to be giving you a whistle stop tour essentially of a few extra stations so three in this video so we've covered most of the big stations they can ask you now these stations in this video could happen but they're not realistically some of the you know major stations that you need to worry yourself about but they do come up and they do, could come up quite easily so let's start off with the first one which is a scientific advancement slash books that you've read now this is sort of crammed into one station so they'll ask you about something that you've read a podcast that you've listened to maybe sort of a recent scientific thing that you've seen on the news this comes up quite a lot but it's not your biggest station essentially you just need to go into their mind with one book that you've read one scientific article that you've read so this is obviously about any recent development that's happened maybe it's to do with gene editing brexit the nhs whatever and then also i would go in with one podcast i don't think they ask this but it's just good to have a podcast that you've listened to and then essentially all they'll ask you is tell me about it you tell them about it so you need to have in your head sort of a rough template about what you could say about it and then they'll ask you a couple of questions so depending on what style it is so if you've read like a book or an article about a recent scientific development they could ask you about you know how does this implicate the nhs or what does this mean for the future or how might you get involved in this in the future now i can't tell you the answer because it depends on what you come up with in the interview but essentially it just needs to be able to combine with a lot of the key issues that are existent now so the nhs brexit an aging population gene editing robotics anything like that it could you know talk about that and also it should link to something that you enjoy so if you are a fan of robotics a robotic article about you know recent developments in robotics would be really good or anything else like that would be a really helpful you know snippet into your personal statement and also it sort of leads the interviewer down a tangent into your into your hobbies which is a really easy topic for you to talk about so that's a very quick stop tour about what that station is and that's all you really need to know about it and as i said it's not a big station don't worry yourself too much about it Okay, so the next station, data interpretation, regular appearance in interviews, this one, and there's generally a pretty normal structure to it. They will give you a line graph of some sort or a bar chart slash pie chart. Those are the normal graphs that come up um, and they will ask you to interpret it flat out. They will just ask you what's going on in this graph. Now that's a pretty open question and that leaves you to a lot of interpretation which means you should have a structure to this. Now the general structure that I tend to do is I will first of all look at the title if there's a title here and I will read the title. Then I'll look at the axes to make sure I know what the graph is looking at in detail. Then after that only will I look at the key. So usually if there are multiple bars or lines or pie chart segments there might be a key on the side so like it will say like blue is equal to this, red is equal to this, yellow is equal to this and then only after that will I look at the lines and what's happening more detail a couple of extra things you might want to look at are things like i don't know if there's a logarithmic scale which is very unusual it won't come up normally things like squared or indices anywhere on the axes things like a description along the bottom of the graph they might give you and that's normally all that comes up so that structure if you have the structure in your mind about how to read a graph that's the best way to do the station and as long as you can use that structure again and again and again regardless of what kind of graph they throw at you you'll be fine now they might also ask you a couple of other follow-up questions so if it's a line graph comparing for example uh treatment rates of a particular drug for sickle cell anemia patients they could ask if they're comparing drug a and drug b what's the difference you just have to explain which drug is more efficient effective but that's all there is they could ask you some science which is why i always recommend having some basic knowledge of what you're studying at a level up till now but they all know that you've only done some of your a levels so they won't expect you to know low but basic topics like sort of um alzheimer's sickle cell anemia cancer dementia heart failure all those basic topics are expected knowledge so a very s simple amount of knowledge on that will s be enough for you and that's all they ask you in data interpretation don't worry too much but do spend some time having a go at a couple of graphs on the website or somewhere you know on any sort of website that they have 
And the final station is Resilience. Now, this one is interesting because no one talks about this one, but it does come up quite a lot. And essentially, it's a station all about resilience. And essentially, what it means is they're going to ask you, what does resilience mean to you? Something along those lines. Now, normally in this station, you're just going to be asked to explain it. And the trap people fall into is they just say, resilience is this, 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 this. And, it, you know, for example, it could mean this. I tend to answer this differently, and I think the best way to answer this is sort of saying resilience to me means this, so it's personable, and then giving some examples of, you know, how you'd like to show resilience or an example of where you've previously shown resilience. Remember, with all your answers, you should be reflecting on something that you've done, so it, it applies to yourself. They don't want a dictionary definition, they could just go on Google for that. They want you to tell them what exactly it means in your eyes and how you've demonstrated it in your work experience, volunteering, school, wherever. So essentially the question's getting at trying to ask you where you've seen resilience. Also it'll ask you about, you know, as a doctor, where will you see resilience? So it's things like long working hours, um, things like uh, difficult workloads, things like emotional turmoil with the patients, all those different things you're gonna have to see, have resilience for. And they're gonna ask you how are you gonna use it, you know, is it realistic that you'll be able to show resilience at every single moment? And, you know, you can't show resilience at every moment. So you have to be able to understand that resilience is good because you need it, but also too much resilience is not good because you have to be able to vent at some point and you have to be able to reflect on what's going wrong and sort of be able to take time out. So a good sort of general mixture of both things is very important. And essentially that's all that this station will cover. So it's very short, very brief, but that's everything. And that's the whole video. This was a very quick video, but essentially it was just covering three main stations that people don't talk about a lot, but can come up and do come up a lot. And I guarantee at least one in five of you will come across all three of these stations in your MMI circuit. So it's a valuable thing to practice these, but these stations, I wanted to make them into a whole video so that we don't waste time talking about one. But essentially that's it. If you've got any questions about any of those stations, you can drop them in the comments down below. My Instagram is also here, so you can contact me via that. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to reply to them. And apart from that, I can't think of anything else, so I guess I'll see you in the next video.